Welcome to another episode of Ancient Egypt. This week we'll be talking about Cleopatra VII, the last pharaoh. Cleopatra was born in Egypt in 69 BC, and although she was married to her younger brother, Ptolemy XIII, she quickly made it clear that she had no intention of sharing power with him. In August 51 BC, relations between Cleopatra and her brother broke down. Cleopatra dropped Ptolemy's name from official documents, and her face was the only one that appeared on coins, and that went against Ptolemaic tradition, because usually female rulers in that time were subordinate to male rulers. The sole reign of Cleopatra was finally ended by a cabal of courtiers, led by eunuch Pothinus removing Cleopatra from power and making Ptolemy the sole ruler in 48 BC. At that point, Cleopatra was forced to flee with her younger sister. In Rome at that time, the original triumvirate broke up. Pompey was forced into exile and fled to Egypt from Julius Caesar. When Pompey arrived in Egypt, Ptolemy XIII had him beheaded right after he got off the boat and onto the deck, into the city. That was September 28, 48 BC. Ptolemy XIII did this because he hoped that it would please Julius Caesar, and that Egypt and Rome could become allies. However, Caesar was not happy with Ptolemy when he presented Caesar with Pompey's head. Caesar did not want Pompey, but wanted instead to take him back to Rome and then have him charged and executed. Alright, sit down. Sit What's down. going on, man? So you got a little head present. of Pompey. Oh, Pompey, dude, you know, I was supposed to kill that guy. I was yeah, coming here I and kill him for you. No, it was supposed to be me. Only me, man. No, I that, killed him for you. No, it's happened. not going to work happened. out. Happened. It's not going to work out. I'm going to, oh! Get out of my head. Man, you, you don't even know. There's going to be retribution for this. Eager to take advantage of Julius Caesar's anger with Ptolemy, Cleopatra returned to the palace, rolled in a Persian carpet, and had it presented to Caesar by her servants. When it was unrolled, Cleopatra tumbled out. It is believed that Caesar was charmed by this gesture, and she became his mistress. All right, man, this isn't yours no more. <laughs> Cleopatra? Get on up there. Thank you. And get your position of power. At that same time, Caesar was fighting a war with Ptolemy and his army, referred to as the Battle of the Nile, which lasted about six months. In the end, Ptolemy Ready. tried to escape across the Nile, but I drowned in the water. After that, Caesar restored Cleopatra to her throne with her other younger brother, Ptolemy the Fourteenth, as a new co-ruler. Nine months after their first meeting, Cleopatra gave birth to her and Caesar's baby in 47 BC. My son, my gracious oh, son, so look at him. He's huge. Look at that, that's a, that's a huge baby. My <laughs> only son is a massive that. baby. Oh, he's gonna be so awesome when he grows up. It was at that point that Caesar abandoned his plan to annex Egypt and instead backed Cleopatra's claim to the throne. Cleopatra wanted Caesar to name their son, Caesarian, meaning little Caesar, his heir, and would therefore inherit all of the Roman Empire in Egypt. However, Caesar refused and instead named his grandnephew Octavian his heir. However, Caesarine was still the intended inheritor of Egypt. It is also suggested by historians that Cleopatra introduced Caesar to her astronomer, Sosigenes of Alexandria, who first proposed the idea of leap day and leap years. The relationship between Cleopatra and Caesar was obvious for the Roman people, and it was considered a scandal because the Roman dictator was already married Calpurnia, his son. But Caesar even erected a golden statue of Cleopatra, represented as Isis, Cleopatra's god, in the temple of Venus Genetrix, 
which is the mythical ancestor Briss of Caesar's family, which was situated at the Forum Julian. The Roman orator Cicero said in his preserved letters that he hated the foreign queen. Ah, oh, that Caesar. So scandalous. Yes, Cicero. You think we should just kill him? Yeah, let's kill him when he walks in here. Good idea. Cleopatra was in Rome when Caesar was assassinated on March 15, 44 BC. What's up? How's it going? What, man? You are my bro? You are my best friend? Uh, I, I you guys get the nice out Jump up and. What, what is this, man? I'm Julius Caesar. Oh! Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh. When Ptolemy the Fourteenth died, allegedly poisoned by his older sister, Cleopatra made Caesarean her co-regent and successor. After Caesar's death, there followed a Roman civil war between the Caesarian party, led by Mark Antony and Octavian, and the party of Caesar's assassins, led by Marcus Brutus and Gaius Cassius Longinus. Cleopatra sided with the Caesarian party, partly because of her past. Brutus and Cassius left Italy and sailed to the east of the Roman Empire, where they conquered large areas and established their military bases. At the beginning of 43 BC, Cleopatra formed an alliance with the leader of the Caesarian party in the east, Publius Cornelius Dolabella, who recognized Caesarion as her co-ruler. But soon, Dolabella was encircled in Laodicea and committed suicide in July of 43 BC. In 41 BC, Mark Antony, one of the members of the Second Triumvirate, who ruled Rome in the power vacuum following Caesar's death, summoned Cleopatra to meet him in Tarsus to answer questions about her loyalty. Cleopatra arrived in great state, and so charmed Antony that he chose to spend the winter of 41 and 40 BC with her in Alexandria. To safeguard herself and Caesarean, she had Antony order the death of her sister, Arsinoe, who was living at the temple of Artemis in Ephesus, which was under Roman control. The execution was carried out in late 41 BC on the steps of the temple, and this violation of the temple sanctuary made many Romans unhappy. After the Roman Civil War was over, Relationships between Mark Antony and Octavian disintegrated. Octavian marched and invaded Egypt at the Battle of Actium. Then he moved on towards Alexandria. Mark Antony fled, and his soldiers sided with Octavian. That was August 1st, 30 BC. Along with Cleopatra, Antony went west. After running, they both took their own lives out of despair. On August 12, 30 BC, they had an ass bite them.